So welcome back to the channel, man. Today we have the opportunity to speak with Ronnie Ambrosi about his past, about Ambrosi Acres, about his construction business. I feel like Ronnie's pretty successful, man, and I like for people to associate with people that are successful. You know, somebody that gets up and grinds and goes after it every day, man. And I feel like you are the epitome of that at this point. No matter what, you have succeeded a long ways from when I met you 25 years ago. So introduce yourself, you know, age, where you're from, a little bit about you. Hey, my name's Ron Ambrogi. I'm 55 years old. Um, local from here. I moved here when I was five years old. My family with the working man's store is a business that my dad bought and built, you know, he had for 40 years. So we moved here. That's where my dad always worked. You know, I went to James Wood. Um, always lived around here. I mean, I've never wanted to leave here. I never will. I mean, I love it here. This is my home. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I started out, you know, I was, went to school and, and in 10th grade, after the 10th grade year, I went to start helping the drywall company do drywall. And I was making two, three hundred dollars a week, you know, which in 85 was a lot of money. And then 11th grade started up and I went back to school. Sitting in school thinking, man, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? So I, it lasted about two months. And I was done with that. And I went full time right out of eleventh grade and full time being a drywall guy. We learned how to finish. And then one day I went to work with the guy I was working for his brother for the weekend and we we hung some drywall. And I was like, Man, this is me. This mm -hmm. is me. That's what mm -hmm. I wanna do. And then from there on, by the time I was twenty years old, you know, I had a couple guys working for me. And it just went from that to having five guys, six guys working for me, and we were hanging drywall for all the drywall companies in Winchester. So what was it about drywall that made you like it? Because I started hanging drywall when I was 15, 16, and I hated it. The piecework. Okay. You like to be able to make money yep. by getting more yep. done. Yep, yep. That's I, what I, I meant would, when I started. You're a fucking grinder, bro. I, I would take my guys, and I would start the job in the morning, and I knew how much I paid them per day. And I would get to 10, 11, 12 o'clock, and my boys would be paid. Mm-hmm. For the day and then the rest of the day i knew that was my money mm -hmm. and i then i push even harder the mm -hmm. last, last half of the day and you know i mean i knew how much i needed to make a day to pay that crew yeah and i mean boards you needed to hang every day right every day numbers yeah. numbers and then, then you know i mean i was always on the job i was the lead hanger you know i had four or five guys you know cut cutting and they were hanging you know i mean i was always there every day i, I was the if it, i wasn't there it didn't happen and then you know i, I hired a guy he started at the bottom <clears throat> he ended up working with me for 10 years um and we and we were the guys you know we were the drywall guys you know everybody knew us and you know after we were just hanging every day hanging every day we started to get our own builders and our own stuff and we started finishing too mm -hmm. and then then we hated dealing with the the bitchy painters so we started painting too so we were hanging and finishing and painting everything mm -hmm. and then that led to if we're hanging and finishing painting these why aren't we building them? Mm -hmm. So in like 99, 98, I built my first house and we didn't even drywall it. We subbed it out because we were framing, roofing, siding. I had a. So where did, where did you get the money for that? Like, is this money that you had saved up to, to be able to borrow the money, buy the lot, have the like. Well, I mean, like the first lot, my mom and dad, they helped me out. You know, the first couple lots, they bought the lots, you know, and, and then. I got the construction loan and then mm -hmm. built the house and sold them, you know, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's the way it was. And then, you know, I was with Bank of Clark County and, you know, heck, I was, I had five, six, seven lots on hold for us to build at one mm -hmm. time, you know, mm -hmm. I was paying interest on them. And then, you know, it was always, you know, money from the banks and stuff. And then, you know, we were trying to build spec houses and a spec house is easy to build because you don't have nobody to deal with till, you know, the closing table. Um, but what happened was I got hooked up with a realtor, which could sell houses. But the problem was is I wouldn't even get them started and they'd be sold. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then and then they'd come up to turn into a custom home, you know. Right. And it just it just it slows you down. You know, you can't do what I want to do. You know, and then you know then and then the bank would make you have you know after you have two or three construction loans, you're you're, you're spread out. You don't have no more money to borrow. So they won't let you build another house till you have a contract on the house. So 
they'd get a contract, but then it turned into custom homes for people. You know, they were picking roof colors and siding colors and windows and, you know, everything, you know. So we did that for two, three years. And that's when, you know, the bottom fell out in 04, mm -hmm. 05. You know, then it was, that was done. You know, I mean, it was... You know, we we, the first, we built the same house seven times. The first time we sold for 210000 The last time we sold for 480 Same house. Only difference was the appliances. Within like on how? A, on a, it, a two year period, three year period. Okay. You know, I mean, the lot was twice what it was, but you know, I mean, everything else was the same house. And you know, everybody everybody was rich. You know, everybody drive new trucks and everything. You mm -hmm. know, we had new new dualies, new mm -hmm. new dump trucks, everything. You know, and then so the bottom is, fell out. This is about the time that I met you too, because I went to prison in '03, mm -hmm. and when I was in work release with Ronnie, mm -hmm. that we met through was what '01, yeah, '02, yeah, when he Ron, bought that Ronnie black truck. Doing, Ronnie was doing all our siding. You know, he was right. doing all our siding then. You know, because we were too busy doing the other stuff. And you know, when the bottom fell out, it was. You know, these people that had contracts on these houses, you know, they're, they're, they they weren't sure if they were going to be able to afford them, you know, even before they were done, you know. So it was kind of everything went to mm. in, in, in a matter of minutes, you know. And, and, you know, we were we were making a lot of money. And, you know, we were, we were partying just as hard as we were working. Mm -hmm. You know, we were, you know, going on trips and doing stuff and, you know, spending money because mm -hmm. it, was, it was readily available. And then after all that, I mean, we kind of hit a low. I got my trucks repossessed, you know, I mean, it's going to be four or $5,000 payment a month on trucks. You know, you can't make that if you ain't right. making that, you know, so I just let them go back, you know, lost my backhoe <clears throat> and then I started framing, you know, back to something I like to do. You know, I, I was a drywall guy, but I always liked framing, you know, I always like, you know, I looked at framing every day being a drywall mm -hmm. guy. So we started framing, you know, and we, we worked in town for a couple of builders, you know, and I had a, you know, five, six guy crew, you know, we were framing and. We framed, and I mean it, that went on for a long time, and then I never really wanted to go back into building houses for people, but but I have, I have for some friends and people, different people. I have built them turnkey, but I don't really like that aspect of it. I like the framing is like the drywall; you're there for two weeks, and you're gone. You know, you don't have to be there every day for three or four months. You mm -hmm. know, you know, we we go in, we frame a house. You know, two weeks, it's framed, it's done, we're gone. Mm -hmm. Same way with roofing. You go in, you tear the roof off, put the roof on, you're done, you're gone. There's only so much to do. You complete it and get your money and bounce. And done. You know, and I like that. You know, and, we, and ever since, you know, I've had a framing crew. And, you know, now, now I've worked for a, a big construction company here in Winchester for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. You know, I started subbing from them. I went to work for them for maybe three, four months, five months. And then my brother passed away. And I was like, nah. I'm not just going, you know, slacking off and working for somebody the rest of my life. So I, I quit working for him by the hour and went back work for, for a contract. And that's where, where we are still today with the same company. You know, we do <clears throat> probably 80% 80, 80 of their framing, roofing, and siding stuff. You know, I mean, we do trim. We still, I still have a drywall crew that does their drywall. I, we don't do it on my guys. But I have a good guy. He's been around with me for 15 years also, you know. Some mm -hmm. of my guys that work for me right now have been around for 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. And my guys are all loyal to me. I mean, they don't put up with nothing, you know. I mean, they're my guys. Mm -hmm. you know? So I how mean, many people work for you right now? Um, I have eight guys on the construction side. I have mm -hmm. two, two people on the... Mm -hmm. We're going to get into that. Okay. We're going to get into that. Yeah. So that's a lot of people depending on you to be yep. able to take care of business, right? Like to yep. stand on business. I mean, there's eight families that eat off my, from me, you know. Mm -hmm. If I if I stop tomorrow, you know, they're going to have to go work for somebody else. And I don't want them to go work for somebody else because I have money invested in them. I've taught them and they've learned and they respect me and I respect them. Mm -hmm. you know, Y'all love each other, bro. Well, Y'all do parties day, together. It's not, they're not just employees at this point. Yep, we eat lunch together every day. You know, they all eat lunch as a group every day. You know, I mean, they're all Spanish guys. Mm hmm I mean, I've, the white guys are fine, but the white guys just don't want to do the kind of work we do. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the guys that come off the stage of James Wood, none of them want to carry plywood. Why you want to carry plywood for 15 or $20 an hour when you can, you know, work over here at Kentucky Fried Chicken for 15 bucks? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it, and I'm, it makes sense. But, you know, I mean, if, if, if it wasn't for the Spanish guys, I mean, I don't know where the whole construction world would be right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, way no different than back in the day when the, the Italians and the Irish were here. The construction end of me is I'll never quit it. You know, I don't care how old I am. 
because I have such good guys. My guys, I mean, I go to work in the morning. I get them going, make sure they have the material, the tools, and the work in front of them, mm-hmm. and I have their money on Fridays. You know, that's only that's my concern on, on the construction side. My guys know 95% of what they do every day. The 5% I put in is just the 5%, the questions they have mm-hmm. that I need to answer. You know, somebody's always got to answer a question. You know, even like me to a superintendent, you know, I have a question that I don't, I can answer it, and I can do it, but... If I do it and it's wrong, I have to pay for it. Mm-hmm. So what I do is I'll ask the superintendent. And then when the superintendent tells me, yes, that's the way to do it, then if it's wrong, it's not my fault. Right. And that's the same way with my boys, you know. Right. They'll second guess themselves about doing something. They need somebody to say, no, do it this way. Mm-hmm. And they'll do it, mm-hmm. you know. So, I mean, I mean, I love the construction. I love being out there in the air. I love it. You know, I love, you know, the, the what, you know, you, you come up to a job in the morning and then in the evening in the rear view, you look at what you got done, it's a lot. You know, I mean, there's something to look at every day. Mm-hmm. It ain't like going to a factory and moving this part to here, this part to here all day long. What do you what do you accomplish in the day? You don't see nothing, you know, it's the same same thing. You know, I like driving to work different ways. I like going north, south, east, west. You know, I don't like to travel a long ways to work, but I, I mean, I don't want to, I could not, never work in one spot mm-hmm. for very long. You know, I mean, I got to be out. Yeah, it definitely feels like it would get monotonous to just go to the same place. I've done that for two or three years at a time, yeah. and it does. And if you don't have the camaraderie, which is what kept me going, was my friendships that I made there, which is what you have with your guys. Right, yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, you got to love what you do. Or, or, you, know, you go to work every day. I, mean, I don't like going to work every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you love what you do, it ain't a job. It's, mm-hmm. it's life, you know I mean? You enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know. So that's going to get us on to your next thing, which is what you really are enjoying right now. But yep. let me double check everything real quick. So moving on to Ambrose Jiggers. Pull that microphone into you, buddy. So first question I thought about was, tell me where the idea for Ambrose Jiggers came from. And do you remember the first idea that started it all? The name came from, I mean, I was kicking around, you know, this farms, this, that, this. And a good friend of mine, she, she was a grower out in California. She said, one thing I wish I'd always done is put my last name in my business where, you know, I had something to look back on. Hmm. And right then, right then I was like, Ambrogy Farms. And then I was like, hmm. yeah. And then at the time that Belushi Farms was on TV and I was like, well, I don't want to like right. copy him, you know? So I said, Acres. And as soon as I said it, I loved it. Ambrogy Acres. It's cool. You know I mean? I never really thought about it until probably six months later, you know, about, you know, people around here know Shiley Acres. Right. You know, and I never really, when I thought of it, I never was thinking that. But after I thought about it, I was like, well, damn, that's perfect. I mean, Shiley Acres, Ambridge Acres, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Shiley Acres is always mm-hmm. a good thing, you know what I mean? So that's how the name came around. You know, 2021, when it, it was July 1st is the legal date in Virginia, when it became legal to grow four plants. So, at the start of 2021, you know, we knew it was coming. You know, we started messing around. I was getting a little bit, little, little stupid lights and this and that, you know, and started playing around with it. And then when, you know, it came legal you know, on July 1st, you know, we had plants going. And, you know, I had four plants, you know, the legal limit. And we grew them, you know, and played with them. And then, you know, I was like, you know, I, I love doing this. You know, I can't just watch four plants grow. Hmm. So... I in turn put four plants at a friend's house, four plants at a relative's house, four plants at another friend's house, and I was maintaining them. You know, I was their caregiver, say. Gotcha. So we had, you know, we were keeping within the laws. You know, it was their plant. They were tagged with their name. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but but we were upkeeping them, you know. And then, you know, that was, that was great. You know, I mean, it was what we wanted to do. And then we learned a lot. You know, we learned a lot of stuff not to do. You know, that's what we kind of were learning there. We were, every day we were learning stuff not to do more than we were learning stuff to do. You know, we were just learning the process, you know, and which way. There's so many diff- different ways to grow. I mean, with dirt and water and soil and stuff. I mean, just so much different ways to grow, you know what I mean? And, you know, you can watch YouTube all you want, but there's 10 bonuses to every type of grow and 10 negatives, you know. So you can't really, you got to do it yourself. So we went from deep water cultures to you know, rock wool to grow down rocks, you know, we tried everything, flood tables, you know, we tried every different thing, you know, and then I went to Canacon, okay, that was in Richmond, and that's a big 
marijuana you know, uh, mm-hmm. convention. And I went there and I talked to a couple hemp growers from the state of Virginia while I was there. And they were like, man, if you love to grow, get your hemp license. So I was like, well, I love to grow. So I got my hemp license. What's that mean? What's a hemp license mean? A hemp license is through the Farm Bill, state of Virginia, VDAC. Oh yeah, uh, issues you a license. You you give them your, you know your what you're doing, where your land is. You have to do a federal background check. You know you can jump through whatever hoops they tell you to, and to get your license. I mean, it's not that hard. It's not that expensive. So we're just we are hemp farmers, or what we are, hemp growers for the state of Virginia. Um, you know they they allow me to have more than my four plants because okay. we are growing CBD hemp hemp flower mm-hmm. so that in turn you know is a, a a way for me to get bigger and then you know then virginia's like okay in 2023 at the end of 2023 we're going to start all you know giving out or you can apply for your growers your cultivators license you know for recreational so that's what we were shooting for so you know my construction crew i was like okay that's what we're going to do we got to be ready we can't be behind when it starts so we built a, a big grow room, you know, 30 by, I mean, 35 by 60 grow room. Hmm. And we built it. And then, you know, we were, we were just, you know, running it, this room a little bit, you know, and then expanded and finished this room. You know, it's all been, you know, in time, you know, now, now we have the, the building com- almost completely finished, but still every day we're changing stuff, you know, because of the way we grow and the way we figured out how to grow. Um, the we have sampling agents come to our grows. Well, first we we put in a, a plant report. How many square feet of plants per plant? What's the strain? And then we give that to VDAC, and then VDAC you know keeps that. And then we tell them the harvest date. And when that harvest date comes up, we have to have a sampling agent come to our grow, and they take a sample of the plant within 30 days of harvest. And then they have it sent off for analysis, and then it's sent to VDAC. VDAC approves it if the THC level is where it's supposed to so be. So what does it measure? What does the test measure? The, te- the test measures total CBD, or total CBD mm-hmm. and total THC. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's CBDA and there's CBD. There's THCA and there's THC. Um, either one of them, there's no, there's no THC found in a, in a plant until you introduce heat to it. Okay, it's a THCA. Okay, when the heat introduced to it, it turns to THC. So the state of Virginia doesn't look at A or not. They look at total THC. So whether it be THCA or THC, it cannot be above 0.3. So if the plant comes back, our test comes back and it's 0.4, then it's it's a hot hot crop is what we call mm-hmm. it. Okay, and there's a couple ways to remediate that. So you can take and you can grind it for mass you know, and, and then resample or biomass. You grind it into biomass, you know, for extraction. Okay. And then see if the level, you know, because when they come take samples, they take tops off of it, you know, and they might be a little bit higher than if you were to use it mm. for biomass. So we, we grind it into a biomass and then we resample. If it's still hot, we have to destroy that crop. Right. So that's more like a percentage of the plant that yep, you're exactly, testing. Then. Exactly. You know, and and we've had a hot two hot crops. One of them were remediated. And then the first one we had hot. I mean, it was a it was a 60 plant grow of CBD flower. Which is probably worth a thousand dollars. Okay, it costs four hundred dollars for us to get tested from our testing agent. We paid them four hundred dollars. They come back hot. They would say, "Well, you can remediate it and retest, or you can just destroy it." It was a thousand dollars worth of a product. We already had four hundred dollars in sampling. We were going to pay another four hundred dollars for it just to get it passed, and it might fail again. We just destroyed it. And VDAC asked us to destroy it. We destroyed it. We sent them video of us destroying it and proof that we destroyed it and everything was fine. How do you destroy it? We burn it. Okay. We burn it. We put it in a pile. Brush pile. Brush pile. Burn pile. Burn it. I mean, it it, it was full plants, you know, because we couldn't, we can't really harvest until that comes back. You know, if we do harvest and and say it's hanging when the results come back, you know, we have to keep it in one lot, one area. Hmm. And then 
when the report come back hot, you know, you have to do whatever, remediate or destroy it. And we chose to destroy it because it wasn't, we were just doing it to, to learn to grow. Right. You know, on, so, a, on a different level than yeah. four plants at a time yeah, yeah, at yeah. everybody's house, right? Yep. Yeah. And then the, the next time it, we had a hot crop, it was it was by a minute margin, which is there's no tolerance. You know, they hmm. give you a, a 0. 0.5 tolerance, and over that, if it's 0. 0.6, it's hot. You know, so we were so close to it, we we tested it again, and when we remediated and tested it again, it came back good. So it was okay. And and when, you know, when when Either you pass or you fail. As long as you do what you're supposed to, they give you a compliant. It's compliant. You're okay. compliant. You're, and we've been compliant with the state of Virginia ever since we started. We've had our, had our product probably tested 10 to 12 times since we've been a hemp grower. And we've had two that I said were come back, you know, hot, and we've done what we're supposed to, you know. We What we don't want to do is have a strike against us when, right, when recreational, you know, comes about. Mm-hmm. We don't want to have a strike because, like, right. every year— that we do our, you know, renew our license, we have to do a federal background check again mm-hmm. to make sure, you know, you didn't get no charges right. or nothing in that year, you know, so, and, and we don't want to strike. I mean, we, this is a business. This isn't, you know, a bunch of hippies growing pot, mm-hmm. you know, this is a business. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, people work here, you know, I mean, people have jobs here, you know, they're not, they we're not drug dealers. We're not the cartel. We're good old boy, country boys. Right. Well, know, let's talk about, let's talk about some of the stands. You've had two different police officers come by the stands recently. Like what was their response as to what you're doing? Well, since we're kind of just spinning our wheels right now, you know, waiting on the government, you know, I mean, we got vetoed here and it, it probably isn't going to happen until 2027 when we have a new governor, you know, next year, following year. So, mm. so right now to keep the lights on and to keep the people employed, um, we started doing clones clones and seeds are federally legal and through vdac we can have as many clones as we want because they don't have the percentage thc in them so what we do is we grow mothers in our mother room we have a specific room for mothers and they are thc plants but we have a perpetual grow permit in our grow room from the state we have a grow 20 by 12 area that is never taken to flower so it's just a perpet- I mean, it's just for propagation. We just use it for for our clones, and so we started taking clones from these plants. And then about a month ago, month and a half ago, we went to Horton's Nursery, and we we were selling you know baby baby plants, you know clones, and it kind of took off. You know, people were really really happy. People were really happy with you know the service we were giving to them. You know, they all were growing these ten and fifteen, twenty dollar seeds. You know, and they would grow and not grow and stuff like that. You know, and then they would take you know three months to be where my clones are when you get them. Right. You know, they're my, my clones are a mature plant. Right. But it's only this big. You know, so you know people like what we're doing. I mean, we last last weekend or weekend before we were over in Front Royal, and had a police officer stop by, and he said. What do you got there? And I told him we got hemp plants. And he said, "Huh?" He says, "Are are you licensed to sell them?" I said, "Yes, I am." And he said, "I, he said, I like what you're doing." He said, "Everybody just was smoke pot. It would be a better town over here." Hmm. He said, "I got your back." He said, "There." He said, "Watch that lockbox." He said, "There's a couple crazies around here. Come up here and grab your lockbox. Take off. And never do nothing about it." And he said, well, I got your back. I'm going to patrol this area and I'm going to watch it to help you out. And nice. Said, cool, cool. I didn't know he said that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he did. And then, you know, he was. I've seen him drive by three or four more times. Hell yeah. And then when we were done, we were setting up. He was at an accident on the way out of town. And he, I pulled up to it at the stop, you know, stopped at the accident. He was right over there. And I, said, I waved to him. He said, hey, and give me the thumbs up. Nice. You know? And then. I wonder if like, he's following your page and stuff. Huh? I wonder if he's following the page on Facebook. I hope he is. I, mean, I hope he, he is he too. He's really cool. You know, I mean, he, he wasn't. I mean, I, I mean, I had my license and everything on hand. Right. You know, I, I mean, I had everything to show him. You know, the the you know farm bill, everything. I had it all laminated right there in a the folder. He didn't ask to see nothing. You know, huh. I told him, and he said he loved it. And and the, the the people in the community love it too. They're like, right. you know, people walk up. I see him walk across the parking lot, smiling, walking towards us. I mean, it's just it's a walk, you know. And I see it over and over in the last few weekends, you know. And they come up and they they're like, is this legal? Is this right. legal? I said, four plants per household is legal. How can you sell them? I said, well, we're a Virginia hemp farmer, you know, we're a licensed hemp farmer. This is so cool. I've tried seeds. I've tried this. Um, can I have more than four? I said, 
I said, it's four plant maximum per household, not per person. You know, I, I explained the role. Um, you know, 21 and older, you know, if you look 21, if you look 30, I'm still going to ask for your ID. Right. You know, I mean, it's 21 and older, and we haven't had one person come up there with, that was even close to 21. Mm -hmm. You know, people come up with their kids and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know, I mean, and then last weekend, we were here in Winchester, set up on Valley Avenue, and two police officers stopped there. Mm -hmm. And they said they had a report of us selling marijuana with kids mm -hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And my daughter was there with my granddaughter. Okay. Uh, my granddaughter was actually selling bracelets. You know, had a little bracelet set up. Sitting, really? Sitting there too, I didn't know, you know that either. That's cool. Yep. So they say, hey, what's going on here? And uh, my daughter's like, we're, we're selling plants. Well, how can, uh, you know, how, why do you have that kid in here with you? And she's like, she said, these are plants. These, we're farmers. We're not drug dealers. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, we've got, you know, she's here no different than if we were selling tomatoes or, or cucumbers. You know, this is you know what we do this right. is, we're farmers you know right. i mean i can't leave my kid at home you know i mean i gotta go to work i got you know so they were like well do you have a license and we showed them our license the one cop was really like detailed looking into it mm. and the other cop was an older cop and he was like talking to my granddaughter and, you know joking around stuff and being cool they give us a thumbs up and they left there was no no nothing negative it was all they were all, they were both cool they were both you know, and, and I'm glad it happened, you know, because, right. because I know how that. many times, you know, we've been set up there for a month, you know, on the weekends and, you know, they drive by back and forth, you know, I mean, and I know they want to stop, but, you know, the laws of Virginia right now are just kind of wishy-washy, you know, mm -hmm. nobody knows really, I don't even think, you know, some of the police don't know the laws, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, is it legal to have plants? Is it legal, you know, we, we don't have any type of product there besides plants and seeds, mm -hmm. you know, something you can take home and, and grow what you want with it, you know, and it's a great service to everybody i think you know dude the community that's building is absolutely outstanding yep. you I wouldn't mean, believe the people that, that give us a thumbs up just ride by don't even stop but just give us the thumbs up you know mm -hmm. it, i love the people they drive by and they they glance out of the corner of their eye and then they turn back around they mm -hmm. turn the steering wheel and they come right in there mm -hmm. <clears throat> we've had we were over in front row for three this is our third week and yesterday when we were there we had four different people stop by that had bought plants the last the previous mm -hmm. weeks giving us the man they look good they look great you know uh, one guy uh, uh two guys that he's an actual realtor over in front royal he come by there and bought us you know me and the girl that was there working bought us both ice creams he said i know nice. it's hot out here he gives us both some cookies shout cookie out to ice that cream. guy <laughs> yep yep it was great you know i mean that was cool the week before a guy brought us two barbecue sandwiches from Hell two fat yeah. butchers you know i mean that was cool you know i mean that that's just uh and you know i, I i'm not really a behind the counter sales guy. Mm -hmm. But it just seems like with that, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. Just hearing people's story. And I heard a lady, you know, um, she's got a, a Facebook page. It's called Growing for Dad. And uh, her dad had cancer and she started making edibles for him because he couldn't smoke. And he you know, would smoke weed. So she started making that. She said that turned into a, a better a business, you know. And she, you know, she talked to me and I talked to her and, you know, it was, you know, it's for the community. It's not a, it's, you know, I mean, it's money. We all got to make money. Right. You got to make money, keep the lights on. I, but, you know, I I like being needed by the community, mm -hmm. you know, than, than pushing myself on the community. You know, people, there's nobody that says, oh, why you charge so much for that or this or that? No, but there's no neg negativity about any of it. It's, it's all, you know, thumbs up, thumbs up, well, thumbs up. The value is measurable and it's a lot. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> God damn, ball baby. <laughs> I don't know what that is, man. I, don't... Uh, I made a little post a minute ago for Facebook. I was like, he's nervous as hell. <clears throat> but I think he's going to do well. So I want to move on to uh, the genetics. Like, how do you pick the genetics for the plants? Well, right now we're we're not geneticists. Hmm. Okay. Right now we're we're working off other people's genetic work. Okay, we you know, we've got you know Humboldt seed been, seeds has been around forever. They got good products, you know. I mean, Mendo twenty twenty good products. You know that's what they do. That's what they do. And, mm -hmm. and I'm a big guy to let people do what they do, mm -hmm. and let me benefit from it. You know, I mean, we will get into it. We will have our own strains. But right now, you know, to have your own strains and have that side of it, you have to have a almost a laboratory. You know, and laboratories are expensive. I mean, clean air, you know, I mean, 
one hundred percent clean room, hmm. you know. So you have looked into it to the point we're, of being we're, we're, interested we're, in we're, it. We're we're not far off. Gotcha. But you know, right now we're just taking clones and stuff like that. We're gonna go to tissue culture and then the tissue culture is where you can store your genetics for unlimited amount of time or and you can grow from the tissue cultures. Hmm. You know, and and you know, people will say that you know the cloning degrades the plant over the years, over the years. We've been growing a couple of different plants for three or four years, you know, since the beginning, since the beginning, it was like original strains and we, and we liked them and they fit our, I mean, we like them, you know, the Charlotte's angel is one of our big CBDs. Um, I mean, it's just, we like the way the plant grows and fits our system. Right. Now, if our system changes, we might not like it anymore, mm-hmm. but right now we like it. So that's why we keep them up. I mean, and you've introduced things that you didn't like and got rid of, right? Definitely. You know, we've, we've probably got, we've gotten rid of way more than we've got, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, just, uh, the way they grow, the way they flower, the time it takes them, um, you know, and, and customers, customers, you know, if they don't like the, right. the products, they, I mean, there's no sense in having it, you know. Back to value. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I mean, I, I can't wait to do genetic stuff. You know, I can't mm. wait to have my own seeds and stuff, mm. you know, but, you know, even when I have my own seeds and my own strains, I'm not going to sell people seeds for it. The seeds are hard to grow. Right. Seeds are, are behind before they even start. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, we pop seeds, you know, to do pheno hunts and stuff like that. But, you know, the seeds are hard for the hobby grower. You know, some right. people say, oh, I've never had a problem with it. But I hear it. I hear it. You know, the horror stories, you know, they grow up real quick and fall over. You know, and it's, you know, and seeds are, you know, $10, $20 a piece now. You know, I mean, oh, crazy, it's even right? higher, you know, I mean, and then and then they have auto flyers. And then auto flyers are great for the hobby grower. But, you know, auto flyers are developed so the seed companies could sell seeds every grow. Okay. Okay. An auto flyer seed is, it grows and you can't clone it. You can't do nothing with it. It grows one time and it's done. You know, you buy a $20 seed and you grow it one time, you got to buy another $20 seed. Now, see, with a photo period plant, you can grow that one seed you bought for $20. You grow it up to a mother and you take 100 clones off of it. Mm-hmm. And then... Five years from now, you'd still be growing that same same plant. Mm-hmm. The same plant. We have the same plant alive. You know, that like if I cut this finger off and it grew back, you know, it's been growing for three or four years. You know, same plant. It's the same plant. It's a clone. You know, the mother's the clone, mother, clone, mother, clone. As the mothers get older, we call them grandmas. And once they get too old, we just chop them down, throw them away. What's too old? Uh, anything 160 to 180 days. Okay, so six months. Six months. Because... What happens is the older the plant gets, the, just like us, your skin gets it's wrinkly. Starts breaking your skin, down. Your, your skin gets wrinkly. Them their their stalks get you know kind of stalky, you know, and they're and less malleable where they don't want to grow roots, you know, in a clone. Mm. So and we can see it, you know, from you know a thirty day old mother to a hundred and eighty day mother, the clone rate would be on the thirty day be a hundred percent on that one over there. It might be sixty percent. You know, okay. so we, we, their mothers, their, their, their juveniles, their mothers, then their grandmothers. And then we just, we don't, we never even flower them. We just throw them away because we always keep a couple mothers back from every time we clone to grow new mothers. And right. we just, that's a, just a repetitive circle. You know what I mean? Again, that's you got we, a grandma because you don't want the mother to die, but at the same time, yeah. it's and like we don't want to lose our, we don't, I mean, we don't want like, you know, we can get the seeds of what we're growing still, but. When you when you grow from seed, it's kind of crazy because you know a regular seed. Okay, say you get ten seeds. Okay, you grow all ten of them. Two of them could be males. All of them could be males. All of them could be females. Okay, but out out of the say you have ten of them, two of them are males. Okay, you put them to the side. You got eight females. It's no different than a husband and wife having kids. Okay, all the kids look different. You know, sometimes you'll have a twin that are identical, but other times you have twins that are still different. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, the same way with them eight seeds, eight plants we have from them, eight different seeds. It, everybody looks different. Some of them take more of the mother. Some of them take more of the father. Some of them take more of this, that, that, and they're all different. So then you do a pheno hunt. And what you do is in them eight, eight plants, you flower them eight plants. And then you see the way they grow, the way they clone, the way they flower, you know, the time. And, and, and you'll have two of them kind of like, you know, kind of like your brothers look alike, but you'll have the rest of the other ones that one grows this much in a, in a month 
this one grows this much in a month. One of them smells like the mother. So one of them smells like the father, you know, in the end with, you know, on the nose. But, you know, they're, they're all different. So, like, the strains we have have been pheno hunted to what we like, okay? We've kicked out the other ones, and then we, we've got to that. So when you buy seeds from any seed company, you don't know what pheno you're going to get. Right. You know, I mean, you don't know. I mean, it's go- it could be e- either mother, father, mixed, quarter, three quarters. It could be anything. So, you know, when you buy seeds from a seed company, you know, and they show this picture of, of the flyer, 90% of the times that picture is a stock photo. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not of, because we can we can grow strains the, from clones and finish them differently or start them differently, and they look totally different in the end, you know, even even with the same exact clone, you know. It's it's that different, you know. So every time you look at this, you know, you, you buy this seed because of a picture, you're really just guessing. You mm-hmm. know, it's not it's not the true picture of the seed that you're going to grow. And you're going to have four, five seeds in the pack, and you're going to have five different phenos, or a male and four phenos, you know, they're totally different. So, you know, until you find the one you want, and then you clone that one, and then that's where you that's what that's where you come to pheno hunt. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean that's because that's kind of like just taking the same person and making the same person. Well, it's just like if you same person, right? if you reproduce with yourself, mm-hmm. your kids would all look exactly but like it, you. Right, but instead it's kind of like cutting off your arm. Your arm grows back a body. Right. Yep. I mean that's what the plan is. You know, you, you you're taking and and when we take a clone, we take a clone from a, a, a say a a ninety day old plant. Okay, that clone that we take off is a ninety day old plant when it's this big. Mm-hmm. You know, it is a mature plant at this big. Mm-hmm. You, you can grow it up this much. You can take it from right there and turn the lights, and that thing will flower that big, you know, because it's a mature plant. If you took a, a seedling that was this big and flipped the lights on it, it would do. It, it would It would never take it, you know. Okay. It, it's not a mature plant. You can't, you know, start to flower plant until it's mature. But with a clone, you can, you can flower it as soon as you get it. You know, it's a mature plant. It's a cutting off of a 90-day-old plant. Hmm. I didn't know that either. Yep. So it doesn't have to sit there and grow for that long before it can start. Yeah, and you know, you want to let it veg up, you know, to get big enough where it's worthwhile. Can hold everything. You know, where it's worthwhile to, to, to you know, you know, get get you know weight off of it. Right. You know? I mean, but you know, if you wanted to, I mean, in our, in our grow our CBD stuff, we don't let them get about a foot tall before mm-hmm. we fly them, mm-hmm. because if you let a foot plant turn it to twelve on twelve off with the lighting, a foot plant will be a three foot plant when it's done. Okay, so if you took a three foot plant and flipped it, it would be a six foot plant mm-hmm. when it's done. It's and double. a six foot plant is is unmanageable in in a grow. Mm-hmm. You know, people say bigger's better, bigger's better, bigger's better with plants, but it's not. You know, uh, you know, if we lived in the Emerald Triangle and Humboldt, you know, something like that. You know, they have perfect October weather, perfect September weather, eighty degrees, forty fifty percent humidity. You know, here we have eighty degrees. 80 percent humidity right and it changes so, day to day so, so it, it it's not it's not a good thing to i mean a big giant plant has its own little ecosystem in the center of it you know it's if it's humid outside imagine how humid it is in the center of that plant and that promotes rot bugs you know all kinds of different stuff mm-hmm. that you don't want you know so a smaller plant is way more manageable you know, just keeping up with and trellising, you know, a big, a big giant plant, you know, oh, it's beautiful. I've seen so many pictures, people show me their plants. Oh, look at this, look at this. And I'm just shaking my head thinking, man, they're going to have a mess come fall. Right. Man, I mean, they're going to have their hands full. And they ain't going to be able to, I mean, they're going to be, because, you know, once the plant starts budding and stuff, you know, the limbs will break off, you know, right. that you'll get bud rot. You know, I mean, it's just, oh, it's hard to manage that big plant. You know, more is better, more is better. Plant two plants if you want. Plant three plants in place of that one big giant plant. And and don't put your plants out in March and April. You right. know, that that's just going to grow a tree that you're going to have to build scaffold around the right. trellis, you know. And we're going to get into more videos. Y'all got any questions or anything about anything you're saying with that, man? Drop comments. Drop anything you want. We're going to make responses. We're going to make videos that respond to anything y'all have. So make sure y'all put that up. Okay, and then, uh, so, I wanted to ask this, too. What are the future goals? Like, what do you see Ambrosia Acres becoming at this point? We are waiting for our cultivator's license for recreational. That's what we're waiting for. And when that happens, it's going to go crazier. It's going to, I mean, it's going to go crazy everywhere, you know, because, you know, we've got our, our grow up and running, but it's not, 
it's a quarter of what this place will be. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, as soon as we get our cultivators license for recreational, we'll have this times three or four. Okay, now. Top notch. And, and, and we already know how to build them. We already know what works. We are, I mean, we'll have the, the system, the recipe down. Mm -hmm. We'll have our strains. We'll have the recipe for our strains. You know, we'll, we'll know, you know. So that being said, I mean, the when we built this place here, we we leveled off enough ground and did all the, the work, you know, septic system, wells, all that stuff to maintain four times what we built so you was planning for the future when you set the because foundation. we thought we thought we thought you know you know 21 you know when july 1st that in 22 end of 22 into 23 mm -hmm. that they were going to start issuing cultivators mm -hmm. license you know because the way the way the the business should work is grown in virginia sold in virginia yeah absolutely you know that, that's local. what that's what i like you know i mean that's you know you know like right now you know i mean you know, out west and and you know that stuff is all trickled into this you know this area you know i mean the, I, I guarantee you that 60 percent of of the product that's around winchester or virginia is from out west or oregon or you know michigan you know i mean places that have been grown for five or six mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. but you know virginia was you know they talk about 400 cultivation license 800 retail stores you know dispensaries so and that's you know, what you're saying that Virginia is going to allow 400 that, well, that, cultivators. That's what, that's what that's what was written when when they legalized for four plant. You know, person can have four plants and, and carry with up to an ounce with them. Okay. They said that you know that was the beginning of it, and then to follow was, you know, the you know cultivation licenses and the manufacturing licenses and and the uh, dispensary licenses, which mm -hmm. which never happened because mm -hmm. we we. We, we were a democratic state and now we we're, we have a republican governor the republican governor as soon as he come in office he just put everything on the back burner back burner back burner and then you know the house and the senate you know voted and they had the bill ready and just here like a couple months ago our, our governor vetoed it. All right okay a veto can be overturned but it was but the the House and the Senate was won by such small margin, there wasn't enough to ve to override that veto. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm and, and it all boils down to, I mean, alcohol, gaming, you know, they have a big influence on gov governments. Okay, you know, you know, you don't you don't give me the alcohol, I'm not giving you the gaming. You not give me the gaming, I'm not giving you the the, the marijuana. You know, it, it's all just it's politics right now. You know, and and you know we're gonna. There's a lot of people that's invested millions and millions and millions of dollars. I'm just a little guy. There's people out there that are 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 just struggling to keep the lights on, and you know they're laying people off. You know they're selling their equipment already. You know because you know by now 2024 we're supposed to be up and running. You know 2023 we were supposed to be cultivating. You know cultivating so our dispensaries have our product by 2024 when it was supposed to be. And so that veto hurt a lot of people and. It's still hurting them every day, you know, and that's, that's, I mean, I'm out here on the weekends myself selling little baby plants to keep the lights on. So to wait for 2026 or 2027, you know, when it's going to happen. For the you know, bureaucracy if it, if it, to end. If, I mean, if it doesn't happen federally, it's going to happen on the state level because, I mean, like right now, Maryland, D.C., all these places have recreational dispensaries open. So, I mean, we live right here in the top of Virginia, and Maryland surrounds us, okay? How many people go to Maryland to buy their products, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, and where's that money go? Is it going to our Virginia schools and our highways? No, it's going to, to Maryland, you know? I mean, and every day we're losing millions of dollars, you know? It's, you know I mean, we're taxpayers, you know, and the people collecting our taxes aren't smart enough to say, hey, man, look, you know, we could have, low, we could have lower doing? taxes if we taxed, you know, if we had, to, had yeah. the, mar the recreational thing going on. You know, I mean, and, you know, the D.C. deal, D.C. has been legal, our nation's capital, they've been legal for five, eight years, you know, I mean, and, and you know, it's a, people drive to D.C. and they bring it, bring all the product up to Winchester, you know, I mean, and, and I see it every day. I mean, why, but. That money's just going out of state, you know. I mean, I want I wanted to. I mean, I want Virginia grown, Virginia owned, Virginia's you know product, you know, on the shelf, and that's and that's what 
you know, if Virginia would do their thing, you know, that's what, I mean, they don't even have the laws written. It's all, you know, everything's a guest job right, right. now. I mean, back I to can, the rule book. I, I can tell by, you know, the people I talk to every weekend, you know, they don't know. Right. You Nobody know, they're, knows. They're back to the rule to book, which There's, we're trying to take care yeah. of by getting a sheriff on here. Yep. to ask him some questions for yep. these very reasons yep. why I mean, we're all confused, why nobody knows what's going on. Yeah, you know, I mean, if the police don't know what's going on, I mean, how does the public, you know? Mm -hmm. If the government doesn't even know what's going on, you know, they're, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, they, we don't even know how they're going to tax it. We don't know how who they're going to allow. I mean, I mean, right now, Big Pharma's got five medical grows in the state of Virginia. Hmm. They're $60,000 a year license, plus taxes on square footage on, on canopy. So Big Pharma is putting all the medical product into the medical dispensaries in Virginia. Okay, the whole deal with what they were talking about doing was, you know, they're gonna let the mom and pops, you know, businesses get into that. You know, why should Big Pharma take over the marijuana business? You know, I mean, it, it's- Because they take over every. Well, I know, but, yeah, but you but, know, yeah. I thought we, I thought at the time we were going to be smart enough not to let that happen. Right. You know, they already got all the medical. And you know they want their hands in it, man. But, you know, when I went to Canacon, Big Pharma was there. Okay. And, you know, I talked to, the, you know, the normal talk and, you know, people talked, you know, in seminars I went to. And Big Pharma was like, you know, if they go recreational, we cannot keep up. Right. We cannot keep up okay. with, with the demand we, or what we got now. But are we going to allow them to get triple in size and take care of that I, I hope not i mean i hope not i hope because you know you know they they people think of it as you know a, a drug a, a like you know back in the you know 80s and 70s and 80s and stuff you know the cartel was involved in all the you know, marijuana trade you know i mean and, and it was a shifty business you know i mean they didn't care who what they did or what they did to, you know get their product on the street and who messed with them they took care of you know i mean and, and, and a lot of people still think that but you know since california legalized you know and and you know everybody's kind of laid back a little bit you know there's no crime related with marijuana right, right now people aren't robbing and stealing for no, pot, bro. No, no nobody i mean because and so that being said you know i mean i want to be a a grower. I want to be a cultivator. I want to, you know, do what I love to do. You know, and and you know, some people, you know, still think you know it's it's, it's drugs. It's drugs. It's drugs. It's it's a drug. It's a it's no more than coffee. Hmm. You know, people get up in the morning and have to have a cup of coffee. If they're not, they're grouchy as hell. Some people get up in the morning and and smoke a joint. <clears throat> we don't have nothing bad that we would ever put in our plants because you know it's just like you know you wouldn't. You wouldn't intentionally feed your children something that you knew was going to hurt them. Mm -hmm. And that's how we treat our girls here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marijuana has been scheduled with heroin and, and, and meth and MDNA as a Schedule 1 forever. Okay? Cocaine's number two. It's Schedule 2. Okay? They're, they're rescheduling marijuana down to a number three, which is good because, you know, then you can do human testing. Then you can do testing. And, and you know, a Schedule 3 is antibiotics it's still controlled by a doctor okay but it's you know it's not a number class one or class two mm -hmm. and and it's and, and alcohol isn't even on the schedule so i mean alcohol is the root of all evil i mean you never you know smoke a joint and will beat your wife up you never want to smoke a joint and and drive blacked out in into a crowd of people i said i mean you, i mean if a husband and wife get in a fight and he goes out in the out in the garage and drinks a quart of liquor. Mm -hmm. He's gonna mm -hmm. come back in and beat the mm -hmm. shit out of her. He goes out there and smokes a joint. He's gonna come in and give her a hug, good right, bed. Right. I mean, get, either way, she, if, ice cream even if he's not gonna beat on her, she's probably gonna be disappointed because he's drunk and stupid. But yeah. he's definitely not gonna smoke yeah. a joint I mean, and then get violent. Yeah, people say you know, gateway drug, gateway drug. We use a gateway drug. It's not a gateway drug. It's not at all. Alcohol is the gateway drug, and it's an unscheduled drug. You know, I mean. Every store has a thousand different kinds of alcohol in it, which will impair you and ruin you mm -hmm. 10 times over compared to any type of weed. You can't smoke enough weed to get blacked out drunk, you know? You so cannot. what, legalize it to the point of where you're measuring it the same way they do alcohol? Like the limitations well, well, I mean, are the same? I mean, you can't, 
you can't put the stigmata of the of the cartel and the marijuana is is in everybody's head. You know, I'm sure, like you know, back in Prohibition, right? You know, when so they ha- outlawed too. alcohol, I'm sure you know people didn't like it and they liked that the Prohibition or whatever. And then when they the, when that was dropped, I'm sure that it took a lot of years before people didn't get normal th- to didn't think of it. But you know. Alcohol is big business, you know, big business, you know, a lot of tax dollars, you know, but so is, so is weed, you know, I mean, that's, I just wish, you know, that I don't care how much they tax us, how much they, what they, what, what they, who they make us drunk through, we'll do it. You know, we, mm-hmm. we just want the right and the, and the, you know, be able right. to do what you know we love, you know, I mean, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I could, I could be a brewery, but you know, right. But it's back to the <laughs> same thing. I don't think, I don't, you know, I don't want people to. You know, I'm sure if you're, you know, you're making hard liquor and stuff like that, do people come up to you and say how how, how much it's helped them, how much, you know, no, they like not. it? No, of course not. Of course not. No, they, oh, man, stuff gets you fucked up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all they, and that's where I was just going with this, too, because, you know, 95% of the time we talk about addiction and things like right, that. Yeah. And I still talk about smoking weed on a regular basis, you know yeah. what I mean? California sober. Uh, yeah, and I feel like that it it is medication to a point. It does help to it's <clears throat> it's especially for people that are like Xanax or clonazepam, or if you're taking Valiums yeah. and things like that to calm you down. I think this is better in that way because when I come back, I'm just kind of normal. You know, you Absolutely. Pay, you know, I mean, you know, there's heavy heavy indicas and stuff. You know that are somebody somebody designed them to be pain medicine mm-hmm. you know i mean pain man and you know you know the funny thing about pain management i know some friends and stuff you know that have bad backs and stuff like that they're on pain management they cannot smoke weed and get their pills and get their pills i know not now that's ridiculous i mean that see now that's what makes me come back to thinking though, about even, big even, pharma even though it's legal even though it's legal right, in the state of right, Virginia. But, uh, same thing is how can you give somebody a piss test for something that's legal and firing from a job? I, yeah, I exactly. think these are the things that need to be taken care of. Yeah, I mean, Shout out to the sheriff. We need the sheriff <laughs> on here, man. We need the sheriff to answer yeah, some mean, questions you know, you for can, us. Can, but yeah, I agree with all that, dude. It's never made me rob, steal, or do anything I mean, crazy you're a like that. from weed? I mean, no. Right. I mean, you don't get hangers from weed you know, because mm-hmm. your body detoxifies it. You know, I mean, you know, alcohol, you know, you're sick, you're it's sweating. It's back to natural stuff, too, right? Yeah. All right, man. Is there anything else, really? You wanna, uh, you wanna uh, shout out to well, that VA normal well, I place? Well, I wanna thank a couple people around town. Okay, um, let's I do that. Thank, I wanna thank Chris Horton at Horton's Nursery. He's a good friend of mine, and you know he lets us do whatever we want in there. You know, have the seminars and stuff like that, and pop ups and stuff in his shop there. Um, he's he he's got all the great products and stuff like that you need. Um, I'd like to thank Malik over at Tobacco Hut. For getting me hooked up with them guys nice. um, for being able to set up in their parking lots and do what we do um i'd like to thank winchester gardening nick um he, he's at the local grocery store here in town and he helps me out a lot and stuff like that uh and jamie folks right <laughs> shout out to the crew man i think yeah. we got a lot i think we got a nice little team going on yeah. here yeah we do i, mean, I think our team's growing slowly yeah. and uh it's gonna be something it's going to be something great. It's a good community, man. I know a lot of the yep. people that are responding, and it's a good community. Of yeah, there's no negatives right now. I mean, we, 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 I had a older lady and her daughter walk up to the table on Saturday, and she said, Oh, what do you got here? And I said, Uh, hemp. And, uh, the, the younger the daughter said, Oh, oh, no, 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 we don't want none of that. And, uh, I said, well, it's kind of funny because if my mom, if I was with my mom and she seen flowers or plants over there, she'd have to come right over and see what mm-hmm. they were. She goes, oh no, everything's we, we don't have any problem with it. We just don't do it. It's fine. And they mm-hmm. walked away. Just that, that was like, I mean, that, that was the only neg. I mean, the only person that didn't wasn't interested in buying or, or learning about it. Mm-hmm. You know, that was. I mean, that was the worst of. I mean, there wasn't one person so you know, that the blew plants. the horn and flipped us off or, right. or you know, not, no negativity, right. none, none. Right. Well, if you were staying there selling meth, they probably would. Oh, yeah. I would expect them to. I mean, we, we were over in Front Royal and we watched it. We watched the stuff going on around there, you know, and it was crazy, you know. Ah. The guys walked around with gas cans, huffing gas, you know. I mean, that's that's crazy, you know. Just but, right out in the open on the street. Right out in the open, you know. I mean, it's, I mean, and, you know, I mean, I'm not saying marijuana would fix them guys, but you know, right. it would be something better than what they're doing. You know? <laughs> it would be, it would be a lot better than what they're doing. Yeah. So yeah, man, out, outstanding. I think this went well. I know you started out a little nervous. I got better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> hey, so we're going to end this on that note, man. Like, subscribe, and share. Any comments y'all want to drop right there, drop a comment. Let us know what y'all think of the podcast. Let us know what y'all think of Ambrose Jakers. If you're not following Ambrose Jakers on Facebook, go do that. Um, weekly updates, weekly clone sales at this point. There's t-shirts like you see in the background. Um, if you go over to that Facebook page, man, you'll see a lot of what's going on. There's interesting stuff there. We're going to start producing more content, instructional videos, and uh, yeah, just interesting pictures and things as well, man. So enjoy that page. And until the next time, don't sweat the petty things. Pet the sweaty things. A crazy fucker. <laughs>